the body is the blood of the lamb of the lord jesus the blood of jesus it is the blood that maketh an atonement for your soul and i pray that that will sink deep into your soul into your mind into your heart in jesus name we're looking at Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. I'm reading verse 25 and then I'll back up. I'll back up to verse 9. Romans chapter, uh, chapter 3 and we're starting with verse 25. Romans chapter 3 verse 25. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Whom God has set up. He is the one that clears our record. He is the one that justifies us. He is the one that gives us redemption. And it is through this, through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. When he says the sins that are passed, that means all the sins you have committed from the time you were born. From the time you knew the two and two make four. From the time you knew your left from right. From the time you came to what we call the age of accountability. You could account for what you did. When you tell the lie, you knew it was a lie. When you fought, you know it was wrong. When you deceived, you knew it was wrong. From that time until you meet the Lord Jesus Christ, all that time we call all that you did from the age of accountability. It says over here, all those sins that are past the blood of Jesus takes their care of them all. What are those sins? Let's look at chapter 3 from verse 9. From verse 9, what's there? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Jews and Gentiles, Jesus died for everyone. Jesus paid the price for everyone. And Jesus shed his blood so that all the sins of the Jews and the Gentiles can be forgiven. Verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. There is, they are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that that do it good no not one is telling us that you'll never be good enough for salvation it's only because jesus christ died for you that's why you get saved you'll never be able to come and present before the lord see oh god see how good i am see how religious i am and see how nice i am and see how profitable i am it will never do for your salvation look at verse 13 their throat is an open sepulcher with their tongues, they have used the siege. The poison of us is under their leaves, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to, to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the Lord says, it says to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. All the world guilty. All the world guilty. Every individual guilty. Every family guilty. Every community guilty. Every city guilty. Every nation guilty. That all the world may become guilty before the Lord. Look at verse. Look at the verse twenty. There, therefore, by the deeds of the law, I'm trying my best. By the deeds of the law, I'm, I'm trying to be righteous in my own in my own self righteousness. Those are the deeds of the law. It says, "There shall no flesh be justified." in his sight for by the law is the knowledge of sin but now but now but now the righteousness of god without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets even the righteousness of god which is by faith of jesus christ unto all and upon all them that believe but there is no difference for all have seen and come short of the glory of God. All have seen, all have seen. You have seen, you have seen, I have seen in the past. And now it's seen that all the sins we committed in the past, everything will bring judgment to our lives. Everything will bring condemnation into our lives. Everything will bring eternal, everlasting punishment upon our lives. But for Jesus but for Jesus, but for Jesus who came on the cross and said, I'll bear their punishment. 
I'll bear all their guilt. I'll bear all their condemnation. And he paid the price, being justified, verse 24, freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission, for the remission, for the cleansing of the sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. I pray that the faith to believe in the blood will be in every heart in Jesus' name. Give me a good amen there. Romans chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 6. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. It says, For when we were yet without strength, you'll never be strong enough to save yourself. You were not strong enough to save yourself. When we were without strength, you'll never be strong enough to overcome sin by yourself. The smallest sin will throw you down. The least of all sins will make you a sinner because it says we were without strength. We didn't have the strength to overcome sin. We didn't have the ability to overcome sin. We didn't have the skill to overcome sin. All those sins in our nature, all those sins in our humanness, all those evil that will draw us and drive us and, and doom us in eternity, eternal punishment. We didn't have the strength to overcome them. But Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, how he came, he didn't come just to make us religious. Many people don't know that. He didn't come just to make us, you know, have a Sunday worship and have all those, all these meetings that are religious. He came to set us free from sin. If he doesn't do that in our lives, he doesn't want to do any other thing. He wants to set us free from sin. And he says, he came. He knew how helpless we were, how hopeless we were, how impotent we were, how incapable we were. And because of that, we were without strength. Without strength. He says in that verse 6, but for when we were without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Praise the Lord, he died for me. I said, praise the Lord, he died for me. I said, praise the Lord, he died for me. Did he die for you? I said, did he die for you? He died for you to take away your sin. And when you put your face in the Lord Jesus Christ, not in yourself, some people, I trust myself, uh-uh, that will never do you. Some people say, I know myself, uh-uh, that will never do. Some people say, I have confidence. If I want to overcome something, if I determine, your determination cannot give you salvation and victory. It is what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man. In verse 7, where one die, yet for adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God, but God, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, you ask somebody, are you saved? He says, not yet. I will say, what are you waiting for? I want to turn over a new leaf. I want to become better. I want to cleanse myself. When I know that I've turned over a new leaf and I become better, I will go to uh, say, Lord, I'm good enough for salvation. Now you'll never be good enough for salvation. When it says, while we're yet sinners, yet sinners, yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Eternal wrath saved. We're saved from that. Everlasting punishment, we're saved from that. And I pray that this will burn into your heart in Jesus' name. For if when we were enemies, if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Then verse 11, verse 11, and not only so, but we also joy and rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have received the atonement, by whom we have received the atonement. 
That's what he did for us. And I pray that you'll be a beneficiary of that thing he did on the cross of Calvary in Jesus' name. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And I'm reading over here. I'm reading here from a verse. I'm reading from verse 14. Ephesians chapter 2. Reading from verse 14. Still talking about what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. The price he paid. The price he paid so that all the sins of the past will be taken away. The price he paid so that it will give you peace of mind. The price he paid so that you have victory over all the sins of the price. Because Jesus paid all the price there is to be paid. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14. For he is our peace. He is our peace. He is the one that made the way of peace for us. He is the means of peace with God. He is the one that has purchased is that eternal peace for us for he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us the wall of partition between us and god he broke that down the wall of partition between us and righteousness he broke that down the wall of partition between us and accept acceptance with the lord he broke that down the wall of partition between the gentile and the jews he broke that down the wall of partition between clay clergy and lady he broke that down he broke down every wall of partition and then he says having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of ten twain one new man to make, make him peace so make him peace it says that and that he might reconcile both unto god in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby and he came and he preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were night. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Through him, through the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that paid the price for our redemption. Through him, through our Savior, through our substitute, through our sin bearer, we now have access unto the Father. In verse 19, now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. I pray that benefit will be yours in Jesus' name. First Corinthians, First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6. In the blood of the land, the blood of Jesus that cleansed us and washed us and saved us and now is preserving us from all our depravity. It tells us in First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. Know ye not, know ye not, know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And that's what we are. Oh, all of us were like that, unrighteous. And in your strength, with all your religion, you couldn't get to the kingdom of God because the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Man and man doing that which is evil, woman and woman doing that which is evil. It says effeminate. It says abusers of themselves with mankind. No thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Then he said, and such was some of you. And such was some of you. But she are washed. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. But she are washed. And then he says, And ye are but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, and ye are sanctified, and by the Spirit of our God. That's what he has done. That's what he has done. I'm looking at Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 12 to verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9. We're reading from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 9. Reading from verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats, no more, or car and calves, no more, but by his own blood. By his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. By his own blood, he entered into that holy place that is into heaven itself. 
and then he says he has now obtained eternal redemption for us verse 13 for if the blood of bulls and of goats and of and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling uh, sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of Christ how much more shall the blood of Christ how much more shall the blood of Christ through who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living and the true God verse 22 verse 22 and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission without shedding of blood is no remission without the shedding of blood of jesus no salvation without the shedding of the blood of jesus no redemption without the shedding of the blood of jesus there's no forgiveness without the shedding of the blood of jesus there is no eternal life for without shedding of blood is no remission I pray that God will help us and will believe in that blood that was shed for us in Jesus' name. I told you it's salvation and hope, salvation and hope through Christ's blood. We're looking at 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. 1 Peter chapter 1, we're looking at verse 3. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again unto a lively hope. By that blood has begotten us again unto a lively hope. By the shedding of the blood of Jesus, he has begotten us unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead to an, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time in the last time it will be revealed for every one of us in Jesus name verse 18 for as much as she know that she were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation and received by tradition from your fathers bought for the precious blood of Christ redeemed with the precious blood of Christ saved by the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot look at Titus chapter 2 Titus chapter 2 reading from verse 11 Titus chapter 2 we're reading from verse 11, Titus chapter 2, verse 11. is talking to us, is speaking to us about our salvation, about our redemption, about the hope we have in the Lord. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It's yours. I said it is yours. The grace of God, the favor of God, the mercy of God, the love of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws, we should live soberly, not frivolously, we should live soberly, not superficially, we should live soberly, not carelessly, we should live soberly, not worldly. It says we live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present we're looking for that blessed hope, that sage, and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that we might that he might redeem us from all iniquity. How many iniquities? How many iniquities? That he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people. Tell me the next word there. Zealous of good works. I pray the Lord will accomplish it in our lives in Jesus' name. It tells us in First John chapter 3, verse 1. First John chapter 3, verse 1. Be, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. The hope of a child of God. The hope we're looking for to the Christ is coming. And when he comes, all those who are saved... 
when he comes. All those who sins have been forgiven when he comes. All those who have enjoyed the faith and the empty prize that Jesus Christ paid. He says, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Look at verse 3. And every man, and every man, and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself. Purifies himself. Not purified in the past and that's all. Not so, but now every day you avoid sin. Every day you overcome sin. Every day you are triumphant. Every day you are victorious. Every day you are living the transformed life. Everyone that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as, tell me, even as, tell me out loud, even as he is pure. I pray that God will confirm that in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Point number two, point number two, tell me point number two. Tell me clearly so I can hear you. Salvation and holiness through his cleansing blood, his cleansing blood. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, I read from verse 10. Hebrews chapter 10, we read from verse 10, it says, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. It says, by the will of God, and it's by the offering of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are sanctified. And it says, it is through that blood that Jesus shed on the cross of Christ. Look at verse 14. It says, for by one offering, he has perfected forever them that has sanctified. He is the one that does it. There are some people that say, Jesus saved them, but they sanctify themselves. You see that? They said the first work of grace, that was by Jesus. But the second work of grace, that's them. That's them. They say by struggling, by trying, by determining, by effort, whatever, they are trying to be sanctified. He says, no, it's by the will of God and it's by the offering of the blood and the body of Jesus Christ that we are sanctified. And when he does it, he will do it perfectly for you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 29 of how much sorrow punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who has trodden on the foot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified. He was sanctified by the blood of the covenant. And if anybody goes back now to trample on that blood and to tread on that Christ, the sanctifier, he says what a punishment is going to have because it comes the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing. And he has done despite to the spirit of grace. Chapter 2 of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than, than, than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and with honor, and he, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for many people. Every man, he tasted death for every man. He wants everybody to be saved. That's why he paid the price for everyone's redemption, everyone's salvation. Every man, he tasted death for every man. In verse 10, he says, For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory. In bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. That is, through the suffering of Jesus on the cross. That's how he's going to bring you to glory. Verse 11, for he, both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified. Is he who sanctifies? Is he who sanctifies? Jesus, only Jesus ever is our savior, is our sanctifier, is our healer, is the baptizer, and he is the coming king. It's not, you know, I'm trying to sanctify myself. I'm trying to cleanse myself. I'm trying by struggling. No, both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one. And then he says, for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren. 
Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. Wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people. Jesus also that he might sanctify the people. Again, he's telling us if he is our savior, then he's going to be a sanctifier. He's the one that does both. He heals, he delivers, he sets free, and he strengthens, he empowers. He's the one that does it all. He says, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him. Let us go forth, therefore, not unto St. Peter. Let us go, therefore, unto him, not unto Mary. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him. And it's not unto the founder of your church. It says, let us go forth, therefore, unto him. Without the camp, outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. We have no continuing city here. The city we live in here, the Lord is saying, is not everlasting. It is not eternal. We seek another one to come, which will be eternal. Verse 20, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, was that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect, that sanctification make you perfect in every good work, to do his will, walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever, and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Him. That's what it does. It's the blood of Jesus that sanctifies and cleanses us from all sin. First John chapter 1. First John chapter 1 verse 5. This then is the message that which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If we say I am saved and we're still in a dark kind of covenant with sick society, he said we lie and do not the truth. If we if we say we we, we are in the light, if we say we walk in the light, and then we use the cover of the night to do all those nocturnal things, all those night things, all those night evils that they do in their pop houses that they do, in all those uh, things they do in that dim light and the foolishness of sin that they practice there. It says we lie and do not the truth. It says when we come to Christ, we'll walk in the light, we'll live in the light, we'll behave in the land. Our lives are clean. Our lives are clear. And everything we do is brought into the open. And we live transparent lives. We live transformed lives. And we live holy lives. That's why it says the people that are saying, hey, I'm born again. I'm sanctified. And then saved and sanctified. They're still doing some things behind the curtain that should not see the light of day. If we say, if we say, it's only what they say in religion, not what they do. They can't do it. They can't do it because the reality of the salvation sanctification is not in them. But if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, praise the Lord, we can walk in the light. I said, praise the Lord, you will walk in the light. When you walk in the light, there is no shame. When you walk in the light, there is no condemnation. When you walk in the light, there is no guilt. When you walk in the light, there is no judgment. When you walk in the light, your, your heart is free. Your mind is free. Everything is in the light. That's why it says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, what does he do? Tell me out loud, what does he do? Cleanses us from all sin. It will happen in every life in Jesus' name. The cleansing of the blood of the Lamb. The cleansing of the blood of the Lamb. It cleanses us within and cleanses us without. It cleanses us in the day and cleanses us in the night. It cleanses us when we're alone. It cleanses us when we're with people. There is a cleanliness, there's a cleansing, there's a holiness, there's a righteousness that is coming through and through in your soul, in your mind, in your spirit, in your heart, in your life, everywhere. And I pray that that cleanse will be real in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. It tells us in the 
Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. Christ loved the church and he gave himself for it. He gave himself for the church that she might sanctify. You see that it always, always is telling us it's Christ that sanctifies, it's Christ that purifies, it's Christ that cleanses, it's Christ that purges us. It tells us that he might sanctify and cleanse it for the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself. A glorious church will be a glorious church. I said, will be a glorious church. What makes a church a glorious church? Salvation, cleansing, righteousness, holiness this, this kind of consanctification that purifies us when the members are purified and the ministers are purified and the workers are purified and everyone in, and then as the people are coming in they see the beautiful life of righteousness and holiness and then our lives are bringing conviction unto the people that are coming in and they fall on their faces before the altar oh lord i see myself dirty because i see these people that you have walked on do the same thing for me and they get sanctified and they get saved and sanctified and then the church every time is saving them daily as many that are coming to the lord that's what makes us a glorious church it's not just a bunch of religious people a bunch of uh, you know church coming people that whose lives are never different from the people of the world that the things they do in the world they do each in the church that doesn't make us a glorious church but this will be a glorious church I said, this will be a glorious church. Your experience will be glorious, man will be glorious, and then all of us together, saved and sanctified and cleansed and purged and purified, and then we're on our way to heaven. It will be a glorious church in Jesus' name, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any sort of thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. It will be holy and without blemish. That's who we will be in Jesus' name. First, First Thessalonians chapter, First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-two. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-two. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain, abstain, abstain from all appearance of evil. And then you say, the very God of peace sanctify you holy. Do you see all these references we're reading? Yes, we have a part to play. We consecrate. Yes, we have a part to play. We lay everything on the altar. Yes, we have a part to play. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. All that we do. But then he, when we have surrendered, when we have consecrated, he is the one that eventually, finally, fully, triumphantly sanctifies us. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved, blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 24, everybody reading this, verse 24, verse 24, everybody, one, two, three, go. Say that again. Instead of saying, you say me. Let me hear you about yourself. Say it to the Lord now with confidence. Faithfully see that call it me who also will do it. The power that sanctifies is greater than the power in the world that tried to put your nose, your face on the mold. The power that sanctifies and the person that sanctifies the Lord Jesus Christ is greater than the one outside there that is trying to tempt you and trying to make you not to have this glorious experience of heaven because it says faithful. He see that call it you who also will do it. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. I read here from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Wherefore see, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight, lay aside every weight, lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Look at your life after you are saved. The things that so easily beset you 
that will so easily tempt you, that will so easily put your back to the ground, that will so easily make you fall. Let us lay aside the sin that does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, that's our Savior, looking unto Jesus, that's our sanctifier, looking unto Jesus, that's our security, looking unto Jesus, that's the one that strengthens us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God for conceit that him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest ye be lest ye be weary and faint in your mind ye have not yet resisted sin unto ye have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin verse 14 follow peace with all men follow peace with all men and tell me the rest follow peace with all men tell me the rest Follow peace with all men, tell me the rest. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. We will see the Lord. I said we will see the Lord when he sanctifies us and purifies us through the blood of the everlasting covenant and by his grace day after day and week after week and moment after moment he helps us and strengthens us to live that righteous holy sanctified life we will see him on that final day in jesus name point number three security and heaven through the covenant blood security and heaven through the covenant blood already we have read in exodus chapter 12 we're going to read that again exodus chapter 12 exodus chapter 12 our security is because we stay under the blood of the lamb abide under the blood of the our security 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 and heaven security and heaven through the covenant blood. We're looking at Exodus chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 7. Exodus chapter 12, reading now from verse 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side post and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. It says, we'll take the, they take the blood and they put upon the side posts or upon the lintels of the houses where they were. And then he tells us in verse 22, verse 22, he says, and ye shall take a bunch of his soap and dip it in the blood that is in the, and that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. None of you shall go out of the house. That's the security. We abide in him. We stay in him. And we remain, we dwell in him. And it is that abiding, that dwelling that gives us that security. Verse 23, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the lintel and upon the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer, will not permit the destroyer to come in unto you, unto your houses to smite you. I pray that we remain abiding all the, all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. We're back to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 35. Abide, 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 abide in him. Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done, the will of God, ye might receive the promise for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Jesus is coming again. I said, Jesus is coming again. And when he comes, he wants to find you within the house, within that salvation. And he says in verse 38, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, if any man draw back, if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. 
but thank God we are not of them who draw back unto what? Those who draw back, what do they draw back to? Those who backslide, what do they backslide into? Perdition. We are not of them that draw back. I am not of them that draw back. Drawing back to perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Continue, continue. Jesus says, continue. I will continue in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse 13. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13. It says, these all died in faith not having received the promises, the great promises of the new covenant. He says, but having seen them afar off, they were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. What does that mean? Look at the children of Israel. They came out of Egypt. And every time there's a little challenge, a little difficulty, they say, is it not better to go back to Egypt? Every time they didn't have enough food to eat, is it not better to go back to Egypt? We remember the onions and the concombers we used to, drink, to, to eat. Every time they had a little challenge, a little kind of brush with uh, Moses, their leader, is it not better to choose a captain and go back to Egypt? Look at that verse 15 again for truly. If they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now, but now, now these people, steadfast people, committed people, consecrated people, these people, the people that set their mind and their face towards seven, it says, but now they declare they desire a better country that is an heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to call them, to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. I will be there. I said, I will be there. We will not backslide in Jesus' name. And that's why he's telling us in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, make up your mind, make up your mind that now you are saved and then you are sanctified and you are secured in Christ. Never even think about Egypt anymore. Every time you have temptation, you have trial, you have any pressure, never think about Egypt anymore. Is it not better to go back? Is a, is a de is suicide, spiritual suicide, everlasting suicide, to ever think of going back to Egypt? I will never go back to Egypt. I said I will never go back to Egypt. That means you'll never go back to the world, all the vomits you have vomited, all the things you have left before. You are not going to go back into them in Jesus' name. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I'm reading verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all? And then you say, but one receiveth the prize, so run that she may obtain. So run, that you may obtain. Or understand, you are running for a prize. You are running for a goal. You are running for a destination. You have something on your mind. You want to get to that heaven at last. And every morning you wake up, you say, praise the Lord, I'm saved. And praise the Lord, I'm sanctified. And I need to remain secured in the Lord. And therefore, every day you are running that race and then you are facing that heaven. So run, that she may obtain. And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things you are controlled in everything what you eat and what you drink and what you wear and where you go and the friendship you you maintain everything you, you are thinking about in terms of heaven every work you do every conversation you have every relationship you maintain you're looking at that in as it relates to getting to heaven that is why that he says you, you are temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we are incorruptible 
I therefore so run, not as beating the air, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. And I'm not trying to start in a boat. I keep my body under. You keep your mouth under. You keep your eyes under. You keep your emotion under. You keep your feeling under. You keep your desires under. It says, I keep my body under. And then it says, I bring it to subjection, lest that by any means, after when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. You'll not be a cast away in Jesus' name. It tells us in Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32, and I'm reading from verse 38. Jeremiah chapter 32, we're looking at it from verse 38. We have come to enjoy the benefit of the everlasting covenant. We're saved. We have come to enjoy the benefits of the everlasting covenant. We are sanctified. We have come to enjoy the benefits of this everlasting covenant. And we are secured, saved, sanctified, and secured. And it tells us in chapter 32 of Jeremiah, reading from verse 38, it tells us, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Give me a good amen there. And I will, and I will give them verse 13, and I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever. I will give them one heart. That's sanctification. That's purification of their heart. I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me, that they shall not depart from me, that they shall not depart from me. We will not forsake the Lord in Jesus' name. And that's a security. That's a security. When you make up your mind, come with me. When you make up your mind, whatever trial you make up your mind, whatever temptation you make up your mind, whatever pressure you make up your mind, whatever problem, you are not going to depart from the Lord. You'll be secure until that day in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 31. Romans chapter 8 verse 31. It tells us in verse 31, it says what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to, to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Then he says, so is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? The apostle is asking us a question, and I direct the question to you. Think about it in your life. Think about it. All the people in your life who is strong enough that you love more than Jesus, who is strong enough that to take your love and to take your devotion, to take your commitment away from the Lord. And you say, Mr. So and so, Madam So and so, Brother So and so, Sister So and so, Mom me so and so daddy so and so who is it who shall separate us from the love of christ there are some people they are not looking at christ christ and christ alone they're not looking at jesus only our message jesus only our savior jesus our sanctifier jesus our healer jesus our baptizer in the holy ghost and jesus the one we're waiting for they're not looking at jesus and jesus only they're looking at so and so they're looking at such and such and because of that they cannot be steadfast they cannot be stable they say if so and so encourages me i will go on in the lord if so and so abides with us i will say, say with the lord if so and so keeps on coming to the church i will remain with the lord but he was my overseer he was my this and that if he leaves i'm leaving if he wants to go to hell i want to go to hell with him too i will not go to hell with anybody i said i will not go to hell with anybody 
Anybody who wants to go to hell, that's his choice. But I am going to get to heaven. You will get to heaven in Jesus' name. That's why it says, who is who, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written? For thy sake are we killed all the day long. And we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. This is personal now. For I am persuaded. Where are you? For I am persuaded. I said, where are you? For I am persuaded. Where are you? For I am persuaded. Look at this. It says that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature nor any other creature whether here or there any other creature at home or in the village any other creature inside the church or outside the church i am persuaded that no other creature shall be able to separate me separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus our lord that's how to remain steadfast in the lord and that's how to remain that by the grace of god all the things the wind blowing in the world will not sweep you away in Jesus name you'll ever come and that heaven will be yours at last in Jesus name Revelation chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 7 Revelation chapter 2 we're looking at verse 7 it says he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches and it says to him that overcometh I will overcome I said, I will overcome to him that overcometh, will I give to each of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. To him that overcometh, I will give to each of that tree, which is in the midst of the paradise. He tells us in chapter 3, verse 21, chapter 3, verse 21, to him that overcometh, I will grind to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and I'm set down with my father on the throne he said if you overcame like he over like he overcame if you overcome like he overcame that you're going to sit down with him on the throne how do you overcome how do you overcome is by the blood of the lamb remember that the everlasting covenant and the everlasting blood of the everlasting covenant we're looking at revelation chapter 12 verse 11 revelation chapter 12 verse 11 revelation chapter 12 verse 11 and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and they overcame by the blood of the lamb and they overcame by the blood of the lamb jesus had died jesus had paid the price and jesus shed his blood for you and he says if you keep on looking unto jesus you are saved you keep on looking unto jesus you are sanctified you keep on looking unto jesus you are secured then on that final day when the dead in christ shall rise and we which are alive will be raised together caught up together with them that day when the saints go marching in you'll be there in jesus name and then remember you follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord but I will see the Lord I said I will see the Lord I said I will see the Lord you want to rise up now and make a commitment to the Lord I will see the Lord I will see the Lord I will see the Lord make sure you are saved make sure you are saved and make sure you are sanctified and make sure you are secured in Christ you're secured in Christ you want to tell the Lord oh Lord here I am here I am I will not look back I will not go back have you given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and make up your mind nothing will separate me from Christ nobody will separate me from Christ a friend and enemy will not separate me from Christ a mother a father will not separate me from Christ and then a child a son a daughter will not separate me from Christ a member a minister will not separate me from Christ a pastor an overseer will not separate me from Christ nobody but nobody will separate me from Christ open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer and say Lord thank you for the salvation Jesus paid it all Jesus paid it all and because of the price he paid because of the death he died that's why we're saved that's how we're saved you want to talk to the Lord in prayer you want to say oh Lord here am I here am I here am I do this in me do this in me do this in me and let the salvation be real whosoever is born of God does not commit sin 
for the seed of God abides and remains in him and he cannot sin and he cannot sin and he will not sin because he's born of God because you tell the Lord I will not go back I will not turn back I will not turn back I will not die in the middle of the way I'm going to go on until the very end make up your mind and lay everything on the altar come to consecrate and come to surrender everything and come to yield everything unto the Lord and say Lord here am I here am I here am I O Lord saved and sanctified and secured in the Lord tell the Lord tell the Lord he is able he is able he is able able to keep them to the uttermost the people that come unto God by him you tell the Lord you tell the Lord you tell the Lord I am going to remain to the very end I'm going to remain I'm going to remain I'm going to remain unto the very end you need the grace of God in all the grace you can get in the time of prayer you need all the strength you can have in the time of prayer and you need to focus on Christ looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith you're not you're not loving success above Jesus you're not loving victory above Jesus you're not loving prosperity above Jesus you're not loving family above Jesus you're not loving anyone above Jesus with all your heart all your soul all your mind you love the Lord Jesus Christ you say this is my treasure this is my Savior this is my Lord and this is the one who died for me he loved me he gave himself for me and I give myself for him I give myself unto him and I'm going, not going to allow I'm not going to allow anything to divert me away from this way of the cross that leads home the way of the cross that leads home the way of the cross that leads home it is good as I on what go to know that the way of the cross leads home let that cross do something your heart today that's where Jesus died that's why he shared his blood for you that is where he gave everything for you and he's saying that you take up your cross now you follow after me is the way of the cross that leads home is the way of the cross that leads home that means you forsake the way of the world and you walk in it never more you walk in it never more for my thought says come and I hear you sound and then I say I'm going to follow I'm going to follow that way of the cross and nothing 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 on earth and nothing under the earth and nothing in the sky will be able to separate me from that love of Christ saved sanctified and secured saved sanctified and secured saved sanctified and secured saved and sanctified and secured you'll walk on and move on until the very end with the Lord Jesus Christ miracles shall come to pass deliverance shall come to pass and when you hear the final amen it has come to pass message received sir signaling full redemption for all through christ march 24 to march 29 2022 live at the glory of all lands by yelsa state south south nigeria and live on satellite, social media platforms, radio and television stations across the world. Ministry Through Songs is a pioneer worship leader, Kurt German. Full redemption for one and all, across all faces and races, connecting the global crusade. No matter how great, how big your problem is, we have a Christ, a Savior, a Redeemer that will set you free because he has unlimited power. Come for your full redemption global crusade. March with us. The Global Crusade is marching forward in the month of March to a location where oil was first discovered and is now your location for the discovery of full redemption. March with us for unfettered peace, giving salvation. March with us for limited access, dealing with every situation. March with us for untapped resources and get drenched in the oil of solution. God's General, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumuni has given the signal. The Lord said it shall come to pass. Healing shall come to pass. Miracles shall come to pass. Deliverance shall come to pass. And when you hear the final amen, it has come to pass. Message received, sir. 
signaling full redemption for all through Christ. March 24 to March 29, 2022, live at the glory of all lands by Yelsa State, South South Nigeria, and live on satellite, social media platforms, radio and television stations across the world. Ministry Through Song is a pioneer worship leader, Kurt German. Full redemption for one and all, across all faces and races, connecting the global crusade. No matter how great, how big your problem is, we have a Christ, a Savior, a Redeemer that will set you free because he has unlimited power. Come for your full redemption global crusade. March with us. This morning as we sing for my gospel hymns and song hymn 89 hymn 190 196 hymn 196 does Jesus care does Jesus care when my heart is pain too deeply to my song, as the body spreads and the care distress and the way grows weary and long. Does Jesus care? When my way is dark with a mind nameless dream and fear, as the daylight fades into deep night shades, does he care enough to be near? Does Jesus care? When I have tried and failed to resist some temptation strong, when for my deep grief I find not relief, though my tears flow all the night long, does Jesus care when I say goodbye to the dear, dearest on earth to me, and my sad heart it the inerly breaks, is it or to him does he care? Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is tossed with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. 